Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello dear friends. Hope you're all well. I'm making today's video because two of my friends reached out to me and said, Shifa, how do you make a CV? Now one of them is a fresh graduate from uh, a medic medical school uh, and the other one is in the process of changing his jobs. And guess what? One of them is actually you. Yes, you. Sitting right there. You're watching this video and you're thinking, how did he know that? If you think about it, when is the last time someone actually sat down with you and spoke to you about how to write a CV? The answer is probably gonna be never. So today, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to sit down here with you and I'm not only gonna talk to you about how to make a CV, but I'm gonna make one right in front of you so you know uh, how a CV is designed. This video might be a bit long, but please stick till the end because it might help you get the job you desire and the interviews you desire. Instead of talking to you about it, what we are both going to do now is take our laptops out. I've got mine right in front of me and we're going to make our CV right now. Um, so I would suggest you get your laptop out and start making it with me because if you don't start making it right now, then you're never going to make it. In between, if you feel like you're falling behind a bit, just pause the video and try and catch up. And by the end of this video, I guarantee that you'll have a decent looking CV, which will hopefully get you into a lot of job interviews. Now, the first question you're going to ask is, why should I invest any time or money on a CV? Now, it's really interesting because I remember writing my first CV about um, 10 years ago, and I used to hate it. I hated it because I had no achievements I could highlight in my CV. I didn't know I, I didn't know what to write in my CV and also didn't know what format to use, what color text to use, what font to use, what are they expecting of me. And I'm quite sure a lot of people out there who's sitting watching my video are thinking exactly the same. But here is how I convince myself to write down my CV. Now this single piece of paper is going to get me a job. It's going to earn me a livelihood and it's going to give me experience and put me on my career path. I had spent my father's money for far too long and now I think it was time for me to earn my own cash. A cash would probably buy me a house, a car someday and probably take me on a lot of holidays and hopefully support a family. So this piece of paper that I was dreading to write was going to either make my life or it was going to break it. So it was that moment in time that I decided I'm gonna invest time into writing the CV. I did a lot of research and I ended up with a good looking CV. Now I know there's only minimal help available on the internet. You'll see two minute, three minute videos, but no one talks to you in this much detail. So I decided I'm gonna sit down, have a one-to-one -one with you, so that both me and you write down your CV and get you jobs. Now the first thing you need to understand to write a good CV is how does a recruiter's mind work? What are they thinking when they put a job advert, let's say, out in the newspaper or on the internet? I'm going to try and answer this question in the next 60 seconds, hopefully, and not drag it too long, but let's see how it goes. Imagine you're running a business and you're looking for a new recruit because you want some jobs done. Now you can either put an ad and invite everyone but probably you're not gonna do that because it probably means you'll spend days and months interviewing people for the job. So instead, what you're going to do is make a criteria of what you need from your new employee. And then based on that criteria, you'll put an advert out in the newspaper. So when you write your CV, it is going to do exactly the same. Your CV is an advert. It is an advert which is trying to sell you. It is an advert which is gonna tell your employer that you are the best candidate or actually the only candidate for the job that the, they have advertised in the newspaper. The person who's put the advert out has never met you. He has not gone to school with you. He's never even worked with you. But somehow with your CV, you're going to convince him or rather make him wish that he had known you for ages, had gone to school with you and had worked with you. So in short, let's say your CV is a picture of yourself you're going to paint. But instead of using paintbrushes, you're going to use words and you can give it to someone who's never ever met you before. But you are at an advantage here. And the advantage is that the person who's actually willing to hire people has given you a cheat sheet. It's the advert we were talking about earlier because he has told you all the qualities he's looking for. And if you use the cheat sheet, you can design a CV 
which will make you nothing but desirable in the eyes of your recruiters. Now, once you start thinking like that, it all becomes very easy. Now, a lot of you will be thinking that we don't have any recruiting experience. We've not been in, we've not been in a management position. So how do we know that what the recruiter is looking for? So first thing I said is look at the AdWord. And second thing I would say is contact your friends, contact your family members. There'll be higher ups in recruitment letter and they'll be recruiting people. They'll be able to guide you better on what to write down in your CV and what recruiters look for. What I would probably do is find a recruitment consultant. These are people you pay and they'll go through your CV and they'll tell you whether or not your CV is suitable enough for the job that you're applying for. It might be expensive, but in my opinion, if it's going to get you a job, it's gonna pay for itself. Now in the time period that you're designing your CV, let's think about what your employer is doing as well. Once your employer puts an advert out in the newspaper or let's say the internet, they'll have piles and piles of job applications coming in. All of these will have CVs attached to them. They'll have someone sat down going through piles of these documents, looking at all the words written in there and trying to decide who to call for an interview and who to not shortlist. Now, if you think about it, put yourself in that place, look at your document, your CV, and then multiply it a thousand times or maybe a hundred times and see how much paperwork your employer will have to go through just to find out who the best person for that job is. Does that sound like an interesting job to you? Exactly. So it is not interesting at all and actually it gets very boring after a few pieces of paper. Hence, you're going to make your piece of paper the most attractive and most interesting piece of paper that your employer comes across. So that the first two minutes that they spend reading your piece of paper makes them decide that no, I'm not gonna stop here, I'm gonna keep reading. I'm not going to put this piece of paper in a bin. I'm going to contact this person and I'm going to give him the job. So how do you make it less boring? All you need to do to make the whole process easier for your employer is to make your CV, number one, catchy. So they look at it when they go through this huge stockpile of paper that they've got. Number two, you need to make it easy to navigate so they don't have to spend hours and hours to find minute details that they're looking for. And number three, you need to make it relevant your employer is not interested in how many pet cats you owned when you were three, but they're definitely interested in how many jobs have you done before this one. So what you're trying to do is paint a picture of yourself, detailing how exactly you match the person criteria that they've advertised in the job advert. And once you succeed in doing this, they cannot not send you a call for interview. Now let's start writing our CV. I remember when I wrote my first CV, I could not just bring myself to sit down and start writing it. Instead, I would open Microsoft Word. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. And I stared at this blank document for ages and ages and I was trying to figure out what I'm going to write. What is relevant and what might look actually funny? What kind of things are my employer looking for? What picture am I to use in my CV? In what format? am I going to give them? Over the years, I've found answers to all my questions. Now we're gonna go ahead and do that. But first thing I suggest you do is open a blank document and save it into your computer or any files. And after you've done each heading, I suggest you save it again and you keep saving it because if your computer dies or your power cuts out, then you're in a bit of trouble, aren't you? The most difficult bit is starting to write. So get your laptop out and start writing. Now the next question which uh, popped into my mind was how do I format my CV? What I found over the years is in, most, is in most professional roles, unless you are applying for a graphic design job, which you're not, uh, formatting is not that big an issue. Most companies will not give a crap about whether or not you wrote double columns or single columns or you wrote in Arial, Arial Black, uh, Calibre fonts. As long as you're not going into the Comic Sans category, which sounds a bit funny, I'd say you'll be fine. Next thing we'll talk about is what colors to use. They also do not care what the color of your font is. Most of the time your CV will be printed out for someone to have a look at. And when your company is printed out, they're not going to use color printers because that's a waste of money on people, only one or two of whom they're going to employ. So anything simple yet professional will do as long as it does not give your CV a very clowny look. 
Remember, this is not an article in a newspaper. It is an advert where you're trying to sell yourself to your employer. Go back to the days when you probably used to read a newspaper, if you did, and think about what kind of adverts catch your eye. And you need to do exactly that. One thing I would say for sure is that do not write any stories or paragraphs about yourself because no one is going to want to read that uh, because quite frankly, unless you're quite famous, uh, no one really needs to know that much about you. And if you're quite famous, then I don't really know what you're doing here watching this video. Formatting tip that I can give you is always write in bullets, write in sequence from most relevant to least relevant. And if it's not relevant at all, then why are you even including it in a limited amount of space? Mind it that after first and second page, your reader will lose interest in your CV. So you want to cram in as much relevant and interesting information in the first two pages of your CV. And if you manage to do that, your recruiter will probably go through the rest of your CV as well. Another thing I'd say is use your format sizes appropriately. Now, I've seen people who'd put big headings massive of you know experience and then education and qualifications. Uh, and when it comes to subject matter, the font is microscopic. So this person who's going through a piece of paper has seen all the headings which he was looking for and he knew is going to be there because it's been there in every document he's come across today. But when he tries to read between all of those headings, he cannot read anything. So make sure you make appropriate use of uh, the space which is provided to you. Now there are quite a few CV templates which is available in all the formatting softwares like Microsoft Word, Pages, OneDrive. I'm not sponsored by any of these. I still wish I was. However, I've got the same problem with them. Some of them have very tacky colors. Some of them have very massive headings. Uh, however, there's no reason you can make a few edits, make a few fonts small and a few fonts large and change the colors a bit and get what you want out of these. However, in my scenario, I'm not going to use a template. I'm going to make a CV in a very, very plain sheet of paper because that is what most of you will have available. Now that we've gone through formatting, we're going to decide what we're going to write. And how do I start my CV? Now this was really difficult for me to decide first, but now, as I said, think about as if you're painting a picture or you're actually meeting this person for the first time. And what do you do when you meet someone for the first time? You probably want to know what their name is. And that is actually a good place to start, isn't it? So let's put your name down first. Now, because they cannot talk to you directly, they'll probably want to know some sort of contact information so they, they can, let's say, ring you or send you a job letter. Because let's face it, once you've made the CV, like I tell you, uh, you'll definitely get a job letter, won't you? So let's put our contact number down underneath and I'll put my address for my job invitation. Now, because we've all seen how Corona has destroyed everything, they might want to interview over Skype. So it might be worth putting down your Skype ID as well. And they might need some more information from you or they might have to send you some more paperwork. So let's put down our email addresses. Um, but if your email address is something like Avengers versus DC Universe at yahoo.com or I don't know, silentlower69 at gmail.com or uh, pinky, not gonna stinky. Uh, well, any of these, then I, I suggest you change them. Um, because if I were a recruiter and I got any of those uh, email addresses, I'd probably think it's a spam. And last but not least, a bit controversial here, is if you've got a professional Twitter profile or let's say a LinkedIn profile, it might be worth putting that down up there as well. Now, think twice before you do that because the person who's gonna shortlist you may have entirely different views on certain topic than you do. On the other hand, your professional accounts are a very good way of highlighting your capabilities, your thought process, your awareness of your profession and your experience. So I'm going to leave this to you entirely. I mean, some people like to share their ideas and their thoughts and some people uh, will probably leave it out. So it's entirely up to you if you want to put in your LinkedIn account or your Twitter account uh, in your CV introduction. Now the last thing that you don't want to forget is um, how your personality is best described as. Now remember, they're only reading a piece of paper, so they're not going to know how your personality is pleasant. It's worthy of meeting. When you're talking to someone, you can actually tell if they're friendly or not, whether you like to go on a party with them or not. But when you're writing on a piece of paper like we are, then you're, you have not then you've not painted your personality fully unless you describe it to them. 
So we would put a few words there just to say, well, I'm a nice, I'm friendly, and probably the kind of person you'd like to go out with. A few questions that I'm asked a few times here is, do I put in my picture? Uh, and the answer is right there. Uh, I say yes and no. It really helps to be able to see who you are chatting or going to meet with, but how many times a person match their profile pictures, let's say on Facebook and Instagram, and your employers know that and they know how easy it is to sit down completely dressed up, suited and have a passport size photograph took of you. Do not take me wrong, I think um, a nice picture in a professional dress does have an impact. However, if I were to put my picture from 10 years ago and uh, it looked nothing like I do right now and I appeared in a jo job interview, uh, they probably know for sure that I've been fibbing them. Now, before going any further from here, a lot of people start thinking how much information I'm going to give, how much detail do I need to go into. It is indeed a very difficult decision to make. But before we go any further, just sit down and think about this person who's been handed a pile of thousand sheets of paper to go through and decide who to shortlist. This person who probably is getting bored reading the same sheet of paper over and over and over and probably wants to go home and have dinner with his family. So I'd probably suggest keep things as short and as to the point as possible. Keep them very relevant while highlighting your experience and the traits they're actually looking for. However, there are some companies would ask you to provide more detailed accounts of what you've been doing. Uh, for that, I suggest you make a duplicate document and once you produce a duplicate, doc duplicate document, just provide more details underneath each bullet. However, most organizations want brief to the point bullets and that is what we're going to concentrate on today. That brings me down to things you don't want to put down. No one wants to know what your marital status is. It's not a Tinder account. Um, no one wants to know what vaccination, what your vaccination status is because uh, let's be frank, they're not going to ask you to donate your plasma for COVID uh, treatment or anything. And no one is actually interested in how many passports you have. To be honest, no one gives a damn if you're a CIA agent or not. Actually, they might do, but that's not the point. I think you get the point. Those kind of things are irrelevant. Now for doctors, I'll stop here and re-emphasize that some hospitals will be interested to know uh, their qualifications, their registration with their professional bodies, uh, and although you can mention them later on in the CV, I suggest you put them down here next to your name as well. If you're applying for a job where uh, your nationality and your visa status matters, then I'd probably put that down as well. What we've got now is the header of the CV, we've started writing the document, and guess what, you've done the most difficult bit of writing a CV, that is actually sit down and start writing a CV. The rest from here is going to be very easy and I'll tell you in a second why it's going to be very easy. How is it going to be easy? Here is how. Remember the cheat sheet that we talked about that your employer sent out in the advert for the job? Get that cheat sheet out now. That cheat sheet will be called different things. In medicine, it is called person specification for the job. So that tells you exactly what the employer is looking for in the candidates applying for the job. So this cheat sheet will tell you what sequence to organize your headings in and it will also tell you what to write underneath all of your headings, what points to highlight in your headings to make it relevant to that kind of job. Most of the employers will want to know what kind of experience you already have. So let's make a heading out of that. Uh, you want to probably detail the job roles that you've had in the past. Uh, and write in reverse chronological order. For example, you start with your current job and then you go backwards up till, let's say, your um, university or medical school. I would also write down what time period you worked in whichever role. If you worked in multiple roles for the same employer, you might want to put those multiple roles uh, separated by their uh, relevant timeline. You can use the cheat sheet that you've got now and you need to see what experience they're actually looking for and then you need to highlight these particular aspects from all the job roles that you've put down in the bullets. If your employer is looking for a particular experience and that is not your, that has never been your job title, it's not a problem. For example, my title currently is an anesthetic registrar. However, if I apply for a job in cardiology, I might highlight that I have admitted and managed uh, complex cardiology patients on intensive care unit, let's say. Similarly, my job title might have been entirely clinical, for example, the registrar on aesthetics. Uh, however, the job I am applying for might ask for some management experience. So I might want to highlight some management experience that I got doing my anesthetic job, let's say designing rotors or attending different meetings or organizing a journal club. So as long as I've got something as evidence to prove it, that would probably do. Now for doctors, uh, patient safety is an important quality and we will all have been part of teams where you, we've had to prioritize different tasks based, based on 
patient care and safety reasons. Also, we've had uh, experiences of uh, problem solving skills, leadership skills. We do all of this on a regular basis, but because we never sit down and think about them, uh, we tend to forget very easily and sometimes fail to highlight these in our CVs. You need to make sure that you do not undersell yourself in a professional CV or in the job market. For people who are starting fresh who just graduated out of medical school, like one of my friends, uh, it might be very difficult to populate this area, but you need to think hard and concentrate here. You might want to think about other part-time roles that you've had and what you've learned and experience from them, any projects that you've completed in your university or in your school year, any kind of teaching that you might have done to, let's say, earn some extra money or cash, different charities you may have contributed to in different capacities, different organizations or societies or clubs that you may have been a member or a organizing admin person of. Do keep in mind that if you're a new starter, you may not have much to write in this column, but also keep in mind that others who are in your cohort will also not have much to write here. If you can mention a few things and make them relevant to what your employer wants, that's really good. If you try and overdo it, your employer might get a bit suspicious and may spell something fishy. And if they start suspecting you, then things only get worse from there. The next reasonable thing to do is to put down your education and let your recruiters know how uh, qualified you are. Now this section is going to be very short and sweet for professionals who've never been in a classroom for more than five years, because let's speak very frankly, if you're that experienced, your recruiters are only going to want to know what your major qualification in that particular field is. No one could give a crap if you had four A's or seven A's or not even one A in your A levels. However, people will be interested to find out if you've had any gold medals or any awards in the examinations that you've taken or any postgraduate degrees that you've had uh, after your initial graduation. If I was going to write down my education, I would probably not go any further than my medical school. Even when you're mentioning all of that, you don't want to make it sound boring. You want to mention where you went for the said education, how long you were in training or education in that particular place, and what you actually got out of it at the end. On the other hand, for new starters, your employer will be very much interested to find out each and every detail about your education, uh, where you went, how many study hours you had, what subjects you took, uh, if you have any distinctions, additional projects, internships, etc, etc, etc. For new starters, you may even want to put education above your experience because you're probably going to populate this section much better than you're going to populate the experience section. See what you feel about it. It's not necessary that you put it on top, but it's you who is going to sell yourself to your employer. So you need to think about what you've got to say. The next thing I'd probably put down is qualifications. You may or may not want to put qualifications here separately, depending on what you wrote in the education section. Remember your experience is not your qualification as for qualification, you need to be awarded a degree or a certificate of some sort. For example, if I'm a medical graduate, but I took a separate pathway of medical education entirely and never practiced medicine for five years, or let's say 10 years, and then I want to apply uh, for a job of, let's say a clinical doctor, my primary medical qualification is not going to count as my experience. On the other hand, you may possess skills where you're very competent, but because you've not done a degree or any education or courses in that particular skills, uh, you are not qualified in those skills. For example, I can uh, work with a lot of softwares like Photoshop, uh, Adobe um, Lightroom, I can work with Final Cut Pro, but because I've not qualified in a degree or a course of these uh, different softwares, I cannot put that as my uh, qualification. I'm definitely going to put down my qualification, for example, the exams I took after I graduated, but, I'm, but I personally feel that I make a separate heading for my courses and skills that I possess. Next heading I'm going to put down is uh, awards and honors. Uh, and you do need, if you have any awards, you do need to declare it because this is something which is going to distinguish you from the rest of the candidates. However, if the first page of your application, that is your education and your experience is completely empty, don't rely on this section, awards and honors, to fill up for that. No one wants a MBBS gold medalist who has no actual awareness of how to clinically manage patients. You can mention over here if you've had any gold medals, any distinctions, prizes, scholarships. If you're mentioning something, it would be worth writing down what you had to do to achieve those and how you felt after achieving those uh, and how it helped you make progress in your careers. Next thing I'm going to put up is courses. I'd suggest you do not just name the courses. Look at the cheat sheet and highlight what you learned in the courses, which is relevant to the post you're applying for. Uh, I'd go back in chronological order, the most latest course first, but I probably wouldn't go back more than five years ago. 
uh, because let's face it if you did a course five years ago and never had any thing to do with it after that the chances of you probably remembering everything from that course is zero uh, and if you took a course five years ago and you've implemented whatever you learned from that course in your actual clinical practice then why have you not already mentioned it in your experience portion of the cv so any courses that you did more than five years ago are kind of irrelevant uh, to this section either they become experienced in which case they should go to the top of your cv or they become forgotten in which case they shouldn't be put down here if you have nothing really to put down here then yeah go ahead put them down Next thing I'm going to put down is skills. You may or may not disclose skills that you have. Uh, just because you can do something does not mean you have to write it down here. For example, I'm an anesthetic registrar. It is my daily job to intubate people. For you, those of you who are not from medicine, intubation is where you get someone to sleep and put a tube down their throat and give them ventilation through an artificial ventilator. Now, for me to write down that I can put a tube down is going to be funny for the recruiter. Let's say, uh, I can urge some people's hearts or their chest, which most other applicants in uh, my kind of level will not be able to do, then it's definitely going to set me apart. And everything that is going to set me apart must be included in my CV. So I'd write that down instead. However, for a more junior role, who's from for someone who's just graduated out of med school, even though it's beyond their competence, but if they have intubated someone recently, it is a very rare skill to have in junior members of doctor community, and so they can actually put that down in skills mentioned. Other activities you may want to include, uh, but are not limited to include, are conferences you've been to, research activities, teaching experiences, um, charity work, uh, and else. As I said, I'm a doctor, so I'm going to concentrate on what a CV of a doctor looks like, but if but whatever profession you are in, you will be able to list activities that you can do outside of your regular work, which might be of relevance. So as I said, you have got a cheat sheet, which is the advert your employer sent out. Find out any activities which are relevant to that cheat and put them down in the additional activities. There you go. It didn't take long, did it? You must be thinking, what is he talking about? He's been going on and on and on for ages. But if you put everything in context, you now have a document which is probably going to get you your first job. And maybe if you keep it updated, your second, your third and however many jobs you want. It is going to get you money, money to buy you food, money to get you a place to live in, money to get you a car. So keeping everything in perspective, if you've sat down and went through this half an hour video, it's not a bad thing after all. Now this next bit I'm going to tell you is not compulsory, but it is sometimes nice to have it at the end of your CV, and I like it particularly. The recruiter will probably like to know you a bit more uh, at a personal level. Also, this gives your, uh, you an opportunity to highlight any outstanding skills here. For example, I might want to write down about my personal life. So I'm a father of two-year-old, I am a cyclist, I like to YouTube, I'm, I'm a photographer. As I said, this is not compulsory, but provides a very soft and calming end to a very strict and a professional document. You may or may not want to include it. See how you feel. I include it in my CV. We are going to use words and phrases which draw attention and they're called power phrases and power words. Make a vocabulary of your own, find it on internet, do whatever you have to do and make a list and then use them in your CV properly. It will give a professional look to your document and it will make it give a more elaborative meaning. Let's say I worked on a stroke ward as a doctor and there are two ways I'm gonna put it down. First, I'd probably say I worked on a 30 bedded acute stroke unit and managed acute stroke patients. The second way of doing it is I've been an effective member of acute stroke team of tertiary hospital involved in out of hour thrombolysis decisions and leading multidisciplinary ward rounds with advice from senior clinicians. You can see how the two sentences that we've just written down have exactly the same meaning. However, they convey an entirely different picture to my recruiter. The first one is not wrong, it's probably an exact to the point detail, but if you look at the second one, I've used power phrases and they have elaborate meaning. They tell them how I'm a team player, how, I hurt, how I'm a decision maker, how I have got leadership skills, and that's the kind of stuff your recruiter is looking for. I'd say avoid repetitions in your CV. If you've already mentioned something under one heading, try and avoid mentioning it in the same way in another heading. For example, let's say I went to a conference and I made a presentation there. However, I attended the conference as well. So I cannot just put down that conference uh, in both my conferences and presentation 
headings. What I probably want to do is put my conference in the conference section of my CV, like I'm going to do next, uh, and say that I attended and I learned X, Y, Z number of uh, learning points. And then I would, in my presentation heading, write the name of the presentation I delivered, then detail it with where I delivered, in what conference, and in what kind of audience. Try and phrase your repetitions in a unique way so your recruiter does not again get bored and tired of reading, of reading the same things again and again. Now, once you've finished writing your CV, uh, you want to proofread it and make corrections. You want to make sure that there's no grammatical mistakes. The best way to do it is to get someone else to have a look at it and maybe cast a second or third or fourth pair of eyes on it. You need to make sure your formatting is right. You need to make sure that the components of your CV are not being cut by you know, page margins and stuff. And then you need to put correct punctuation marks in there as well. On a side note, we're going to talk about something which is very important, but people do not pay much attention to it. In your CV, never try to misstate facts or make up something which has never happened. When someone finds out that you lied to them, it breaks down that relationship of trust that you had with them. And it is very, very difficult to repair that relationship even live with someone, let alone with a piece of paper. If your employer finds out that you lied to them about something important about your experience, your education or anything like that, they will not only bar you from preparing for any more job interviews, they might probably share your information with other sister companies and you may not get much interviews or job opportunities with the sister companies as well. An employer will not be annoyed at you being not experienced enough, but they'll definitely be annoyed if you have lied to them. And even more dangerous is that sometimes your professional career may be put at risk if someone finds out that you've been lying to them. In medicine, for example, let's say uh, you've lied to your employing organization, they can easily bring up a probity allegation against you and they can bar you from practice of medicine forever. It's not just medicine, it's also the same in engineering, in law, in uh, armed forces, in police. So do not put things down which are actually lies. Mind it that your employer will and can ask you for evidence for any of the things you put down in your CV. However, this does not mean that if you don't have written evidence for supporting any of your claims that you've made in your CV, uh, that you cannot put it down. As long as it happened and you're able to give an accurate account of how things happened, it may still count as an evidence. For example, during my high school and my medical school, I was involved in relief activities for a number of calamities. I've actually put those down as uh, some extra humanitarian work that I've done. And in a lot of interviews, when my interviewer asks me to give me to give them some details, I would probably just tell them that I don't have any written evidence, but I was involved in this capacity uh, with this many people. I collected this much amount of money. I used this route to buy goods, dispatch goods to the affected areas uh, and stuff like that. And as long as my story is reasonable and holds up, that is evidence enough. So I don't really need a written evidence to support my claims, uh, but I'm definitely not going to lie and I would strongly suggest to not put any lies down in your CV. Before I finish, I'm going to give you some additional tips to format your CV. First thing I'd suggest you do is innovate. You do not want to watch this video and turn up at a job interview using the exact same fonting and formatting that I've used in this video. Create your own document, edit it, and then stand out a bit. Do not copy anyone else's documents because recruiters are very experienced and they can easily spot it. Tip number two, edit while you're on the go. Now that you've got a document, you can add on whatever happens in your professional or your personal life uh, to the end of this document and save it as a separate file. This way, you'll have a detailed account of whatever you've been doing from now until your, until your next job application. And the next time you have to send in your CV, you can easily format it and edit it a bit and have a more relevant document which doesn't forget about anything that you've done in that period. Number three, every job is different, so every CV has to be a bit different as well. If you're using the same CV again and again for different types of jobs, then you're doing something wrong there. All jobs will have different requirements and if you're not reading the cheat sheets and if you're not editing your CV to highlight the points which have been asked for in the cheat sheet, then you're probably doing something wrong and you're going to have to change that practice. And number four, learn from your failures. If you send in the CV and you're not called for an interview, do not be disheartened and do not be disappointed. 
You will only succeed if you learn from your failures. Sit down and try and figure out what you did wrong there. Whether you misunderstood the cheat sheet, did you format your CV properly? If you cannot figure out what went wrong, you can ask someone for help. What you do not want to do is use the same format again and get rejected again. You want to make some changes and make it better. This is all for now. I hope this video was useful for you guys and from now onwards you will have no problems in writing a new CV. For anything else, I really hope that you climb the ladder all the way to the top using my video and my best wishes are with you. If you want me to talk to you about how to navigate a job interview so that the interviewers only ask you the questions that you want them to ask, then please leave a comment below and I'll take some time and do some research and prepare a video on how to navigate an interview for you as well. At the end, please subscribe to the channel so you can support the community and I'll see you again very soon. Take care and bye.